Health Alert is brought to you by OU Physicians in Tulsa. Hello, welcome to Health Alert. I'm Pam Butler. Today we're going to talk about blood and blood services and joining me is Dr. Mae Ching Fusey. You're the medical director of the American Red Cross in the Southwest region. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Now before we begin, um, talk a little bit about blood in terms of the need, in terms of uh, is there a continual need for, for donated blood within the U.S., within Oklahoma, exactly? Because we hear a lot sometimes that there's a shortage, there's a shortage, but some people may think there can't always be a shortage. Yes, I agree with that last statement. There can't always be a shortage, but unfortunately, predicting the use of blood is like almost impossible. It just kind of depends on whatever individual situations are going on, but as far as the American Red Cross blood services system, mm -hmm. and we do have blood centers all across the United States. We collect about almost half of all blood used in the United States. But one thing about blood is that it's perishable. There's a very limited shelf life. So we collect it, it's just there, and it's only good for a certain number of days. So if it's a certain period of time and we haven't been collecting as well as we could be, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. there could be a period of time where we are in a shortage situation. Okay, and you did say that it depends kind of on the situations. Are there mm -hmm. times throughout the year that you know tend to be peak times, for instance, around holiday seasons mm -hmm. or the beginning or the middle of summer? Are there certain times within the year that the, the need for blood tends to go up? Um, I'm gonna switch that around and go with, we know the times when our donations seem to fall. Okay. And those would be times when individuals, because we rely on a totally volunteer blood donor mm -hmm, system mm -hmm. here in the United States is people have different things going on you know vacation time right holiday periods okay. okay when school is out because we do collect quite a number of units from schools about oh maybe depending on where you are in the mm -hmm, system mm -hmm. maybe as much as about a third of our blood supply is from high schools and colleges so during the summer months when colleges and high schools are off for that time period our donations do drop simply from that during like the holiday season in December, definitely goes down as well. Okay. Usage okay. rates, it's harder for us to predict what it is. And that, as the general consumer, we may be thinking about its usage, that the mm -hmm. usage is going up during their, those time frames. But like you said, actually it's the donations that are going down. Correct. Hence the need for more blood is more prevalent during those times. Right. Mm -hmm. Now talk a little bit about blood and blood types. Um, there are different kinds of blood types. Mm -hmm. There's O and A and AB and all that. Right. Talk to us about that and what's most common, what does the Red Cross tend mm -hmm. to need and, and some of those things. Okay. First of all, there's basically four um, ABO types. And I'll start by saying, first of all, when we're talking about red cell markers or antigens, mm -hmm. there's actually a whole slew of them. There are hundreds and hundreds of them. Okay. But the ones that we definitely have to determine is the, the ABO, and then what is called the RH. Now there are four ABO groups. There's the group O, mm -hmm. which is actually the most common. There's A, which is the next most common, then B, and then a combination called AB. Okay. Okay. Now when we're talking about usage of blood, group O units are used the most often. We may collect it at like say 40% of our inventory is mm -hmm. group O. Mm -hmm. Let's just pretend it, you know, assume that that's the case. However, usage may be as high as 60% at the hospital end. And the reason for that is that group O red cells can be given to just about anyone. Okay, so if you are an A or an AB, mm -hmm. you can accept blood from O. That's why Correct. O is called a universal donor. Correct, okay. yes. Now there's a little qualifier there okay. is that I mentioned the other thing that we have to determine all units the of donated RH blood, factor. the RH factor, right. and that's very important. Now RH as a group of red cell markers includes hundreds and hundreds of different markers, mm -hmm. but the one that we try to determine on all donated blood is referred to just as RH. So you're either positive or you're negative. Okay. O positive blood can be given safely to just about anyone except O negative, I mean, excuse me, RH negative individuals. Okay, Does because it's, it's positive. Right. So that that's means, going to conflict. Yes, okay. exactly. And the most important group are actually females of childbearing age. Okay, so if you had an elderly gentleman who needed blood all of a sudden, let's say like he was involved in a motor vehicle accident, okay. and we had a lot of group O positive and maybe one unit of O negative, this is at a hospital. Okay. What would happen more likely than not is that O positive units will be given to this gentleman because it doesn't matter as much for him. Okay. Whereas if the 
auto, auto vehicle accident victim were a female, say like 25, we would really try to get O negative units available. Okay. Now with this, especially with our blood types and mm -hmm. RH negative and positive, should individuals be tested so that, because a lot of people don't know what their blood types are, or if they mm -hmm. do, they may not know what their RH types are. I mean, is this right. something that everybody should know and make sure their kids know? Well, let's put it this way. It's always useful to know more about yourself right? Right, in general. Right, right. However, when it comes to blood, mm -hmm. um, basically what happens is if you were in the hospital and you needed blood, mm -hmm. the hospital lab would do the testing and determine what you are. Okay. okay. So there are means by which it, that information can be found. It certainly doesn't hurt to know what it is. And sometimes, in fact, what we try to do um, to try to increase interest in donating blood is sometimes we'll hold a blood drive where we also are doing ABO RH, well, we can't do the RH, but the ABO typing. So at least we can give you an idea of what you are as far as your ABO status is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask this in uh, people that are wanting to donate then. Mm -hmm. What are some of the criteria for a person to be um, a, a donor? I mean, what, what's mm -hmm. the, the list, the laundry list of right. things that you look for? Well, first of all, from a legal standpoint, we can only collect from individuals of a certain age, depending on what state you are. Mm -hmm. Because some states allow 16-year-olds to donate. Some require, additionally to that, parental permission. So pretty much in the Red Cross system, depending on what state we're collecting in, we can collect from 16-year-olds as long as we obtain that parental permission. Okay. okay, so that's one right there just on the age and legal status. The next thing would be what the weight of the person is. Okay, the minimal weight is 110 pounds. However, what we, ini what we have recently initiated is what we call our Young Donor Safety Initiative okay. because the younger donor that are lower in weight uh, have a higher reaction rate. And one of the things we want to try to minimize is the reaction rate. Okay, well now, let me stop you here. The okay. rea reaction rate. Mm -hmm. uh, some people may be wondering, what in the world is the reaction rate that you're talking What is that? Well, the reaction that you can have to a donation. Um, a lot of people maybe feel a little dizzy and lightheaded, a little weak after donating. That's a fairly generalized thing for as far as the kind of light reactions go. Okay. Um, it, the more serious ones are the ones where the person, let's say, totally goes out, blacks out, falls, hits their head on something hard, mm -hmm. like the floor, mm -hmm. okay? And that can be a very serious sort of thing. It can cause a person to have a concussion, okay? okay? So what we're trying to do in this group of individuals is we're actually limiting the um, person by height and by weight so that 110 pounds may be true for a 25-year-old female, mm -hmm. but not for a 16-year-old female. That 16-year-old female will actually have to meet a higher weight and or a higher height in order to be able to donate. So okay. there, there okay. are some variations. And to tell you the truth, I couldn't even start listening to you what they are because right. they're literally, it's like a table. You know, you're this height, you have to be this weight. And it goes on. Okay. And that's now, true for 16, 17, and 18 year olds. Okay, let me ask this, and, and after this we'll take a break mm -hmm. and come back to our other criteria. Uh, there is the minimum weight you're talking about mm -hmm. and pretty much height. Is there a maximum weight? Because people may wonder, um, for those Good individuals question. who may be, you know, overweight or who are mm -hmm. trying to, you know, get, uh, maintain, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sort of diminish their weight, they may want to donate too. Mm -hmm. Is there any limit to, to maximum weight capacity? The only maximum weight capacity we have actually depends on our equipment. Okay. okay the donor beds that we use. Some of the donor beds we use have a maximum of 300 pounds. Okay. And others do not. They go all the way up to 450, 500. It really depends on the equipment that we have. Okay. All right. Well, we'll take a really quick break and mm -hmm. come back and okay. get some other criteria. All right. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.